All right, can you see my screen okay? We're good to go? Yeah? You should see the project? Okay. Um, all right, I, I think our first maybe two uh, workday projects, is that true? It was Wikipedia two days? I can't remember. Anyway, we have two days of class time uh, to work on this, so that's kind of nice, right? So, Hungry Pets, this should come as no surprise. We, we built this in lecture, pretty much. Uh, the distinction being we built this in um, normal JavaScript, right? Vanilla JavaScript. So, these pets are hungry. Uh, we see a picture of a pet and their level of hunger right there. Uh, you are able to feed your pet and its hunger goes down. So red is bad. If it goes all the way to the top, your pet dies. If we click feed me, it resets to zero. Um, so I'll let you see what happens when it dies. It's kind of funny. I don't know. I had fun making it. Uh, the bonuses are pretty tough for this one. So don't beat yourself up on them. Uh, especially this one. Every 30 seconds, if all pets are currently alive, a new pet is generated. I also did, I used chat G GPT to generate an array of like 100 random pet emojis that I'm like creating a new pet object when I need one. But you don't have to do that. That's not even a bonus I listed, but just to tell you what's going on. Um... Oh, uh, for the bonus, you can love a pet. So love is good. See how it's decreasing for Pepper? But if I, I pet Pepper, its love goes to maximum. That is a bonus, though. So I actually don't want you to see what happens when they die because, I don't know, <laughs> I think it'll be fun. So everybody is loved and pet. Uh, any questions on this? You're muted, Renata. Still muted. Or am I not hearing you guys? Can you guys hear Renata? Or no? No. Um, any other questions while she's figuring out her mic? We're going to spend an hour trying to... Well... I'll tell you what we're actually going to do. Um, we're going to build Milkman uh, in... Oh, let me turn this off. I don't want you to see... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I care, but uh, I don't know. It'll be a fun surprise what happens when they die. Uh, so we're going to build out Milkman, uh, but of course this time in a React. So that's going to be lecture today. And the reason we're doing it is because it's going to be a big hint for how uh, to build um, hungry pets, right? All right, Renata, did you get your mic fixed? Or? I'm not sure. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> can, we got you. Oh, you can hear me now? Yeah. Okay, sorry. No, I was just saying with that hungry pets, I, I don't recall us doing it. Maybe we did, and I just don't remember. Did we do it? Yeah, we built it in uh, vanilla. Uh, Dom manipulations. Yeah. Nothing that looked this good. We just had a number for hunger, and but yeah, oh. we we built it. Oh, out. okay, okay. Yeah, so that'll be on YouTube if you want to refresh your your memories. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's obviously going to be so different in React. Okay, so today's objective. Let's see how far we can get in Milkman because, like I said, this will be a big hint for hungry pets. So, step one, how do I start a new React project? How do I start a new React project? Uh, Monica? Um, NPM create beat. Yeah, very nice. So, NPM create beat. We'll call this uh, Milkman React. 
choose React. We'll choose the last option. Um, we'll do what they say, right? That's fine. CD into our folder. We'll run NPMI. But before running npm run dev, what I recommend doing is opening this folder directly so that VS Code, when you open a terminal, uh, it will be in the right path. So uh, Milkman React, and if we see like these folders, we know we're in the right place. So select. And now I can run npm run build. Uh, what happened? Oh, I think <laughs> npm run dev. Sorry. Yeah. How do you how do you get out of your previous folder? Because I'm still stuck on the day fourteen folder and doesn't wanna. Um, in the. So in VS Code, you can just go to File, Open Folder, any anything you want, you can select. But in the terminal, if you press or if you type cd dot dot, you go up a directory. Hmm. But it's probably easiest from VS Code to do File, Open Folder, select whatever you need. And then you don't have to screw around. Oh, you guys were spoiled, but... You'll see that in a second. Um, all right. When you want to use the terminal, though, you have to shut down uh, V. And you can do that by pressing Control-C. But we'll run it again because we want to get going. OK, so I don't need this, this nice counter they have, right? I want to clear out their old code. So I'm going to clear everything out in app.jsx. Um, and this isn't running because I was in the wrong directory. You see that? So right now I'm in what's called, I think this is pronounced tilde. Uh, I'm in the wrong, it's my home directory. So I have to go to my Milkman React directory. And now I can run my project. All right, so now I have this dark gray background though. So what did I forget to do still? Clear out the CSS? Yeah, I have all this old CSS that they gave us that I don't want. Okay. Um, so first things first, how do I get the word milkman to show up? Uh, Kevin. Do an H1. Do an H1, yep. There we go. Um, how do I get, so this is an icon, right, from Fawn Awesome, but we're going to be more low-key today. We're going to make ugly Milkman. I mean, it's not like this Milkman is that nice, but uh, we're going to use a cow emoji. So how can I get this cow emoji to show up, um, Jazz? Um, you could put it in a div, inside a div, and then, or you could also do like, a, if you're using Windows, you could do Windows and then the dot to pick an emoji. Windows dot? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Like your Windows key in your keyboard. Oh, Windows dot. Oops. <laughs> it's not working. Inside the... <laughs> inside the what? I don't know. Uh, at the same time. Like yeah, okay. press your Windows key and yeah, there you go. Oh my God, look at that. That is awesome. And then we can search cow. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Oh, look mm -hmm. at this one. It's pretty good. Um, is this one? Oh no, we can't use that one, I guess. That's awesome. Thank you. Okay, so. Wait, can, you, can you repeat that? What, what, what did you? Window and oh. dot together to search for emojis. 
Go to that second tab or the little smiley. Oh, for one. gifts. No, I thought we want a regular emoji. We do, yeah. The yeah. second. We're, the we're not gonna one. go crazy. So, oh, I gotta get used to this. I keep on looking down. Uh, maybe we'll use this one. This one's a little cooler. Okay, how do I get this way bigger, Hara? Um, give it an ID and then increase the font size and CSS. What's a good name? Cow. <laughs> I think cow button because we might have other cow things button, called okay. cow. <laughs> um, and then how do I target it? I uh, use the hash mark and uh, cow button. And then to make it big? Font size, you can do like 40 p uh, pixels or 50. All right, very nice. Um, an emoji of a bottle. Oh, we'll use our new trick. So how can I get the emoji of a bottle to show up? Um, Kyung? Uh, you can uh, uh, do a diff or a yeah, diff. Then I'm gonna and do then, uh, Windows yeah, space, window or sorry, I forgot. Windows dot, D dot. Yeah. yeah. And search for a bottle. Bottle. Oh, that's kind of looks. The sake kind of looks like milk. I don't know. Um, but now the thing is, we need a number. This is where things get interesting and actually prettier than uh, the regular way. Uh, I want a number to show up, and I can easily just put a zero, right? But when I click the cow, oh, you have a hot mic. Okay. Um, when I click the cow, I want this number to increase. But for right now, that that's hard. Let's just say, let's just say, uh, let's just say when I click the cow, um, I want to see a console.log message saying cow clicked. How can I get that, uh, Ryan? Message saying cow clicked when I click our cow. Um, you want to give the dev an ID first? We got it, yep. Or, oh, yeah. Um, you would want to set a use state? No, not to do this objective, but we, we, we oh, will sorry. need state, absolutely. But to sorry, do the objective on, of just click, clicking yeah. it. Yeah. What did you say one more time? On click. On click, um, there we go. Curly braces and then console.log. Now it takes a callback function. We can do whatever we want. Um, I think we did all, actually, this is so simple. It's not worth doing uh we'll do it in line. Um, cow clicked, right? Okay. Very nice. Now I think what Ryan was getting to is when we kick, the, we click this cow, we want this number to increase. So a user interaction is causing information to change. What should bottle be in the language of React? What should the number of bottles be? If it's going to be changing, especially from a user interaction. Should it be a state? Yeah, it's going to be a piece of state. So we want the number of bottles to be a piece of state. How can we create that piece of state, Renata? So we'll do const, and then in array brackets, uh, maybe count, and then set count. Uh, count, count. We might have other things that have counts. Oh, so, okay. so maybe bottle count? Yes. And then set bottle count, and then equal to use state. What's a good default value? Zero. Yeah. And now, uh, oh, what did I forget to do? Why do we have an error here? Because we didn't import the use state. Yeah, so I'm going to use the auto import to import it up here. Um, now, instead of, well, now just to test that that worked, I want a console.log bottle count. And what will I see in my console, uh, Kim? 
What is bottle count initially? It's initially zero. It's initially zero. But I want, when I click this, I want to increase it. I don't want a console.log cow clicked. I want to increase the value of bottle count. How do you think I can do that? Put the bottle count in the um, in the brackets over there in the. Uh, in what's the on -click. what's the only way we can ever change state? Through set. Yeah, through our setter function. So here, what do we have to do? that bottle count yeah there you go and what do we want it to equal um, count. what was that bottle count plus one yeah exactly i was wondering about prev count because i was told something like prev count and then you have it equal to prev count minus one so you're not doing it on yeah so the setter function can take just to the value or it can take a callback function where it will give you the previous battle, previous, previous state, in this case, previous bottle count, and you can say previous bottle count plus one. This is how you should probably do it, especially when you're involving timers because things can get screwy, but a lot of, most of the time you can just get away with just putting in the value and referencing your your current state without doing it this way? Yeah, Max, I've got a question on that. Yeah. Um, so I did run into that with the timer and I don't know why just incrementing it by one didn't work, but then doing the callback did work. Like what's yeah, the Yeah, because the timer gets so weird in React. The, the timer, when it fires, it goes away to the browser and it uses the old values. Um, so it doesn't have access to the newest values when that, in 30 seconds, when it eventually fires. So things get very strange to our eyes. Um, so it might take a little bit of tweaking between these two things. Outside of timers, you really can probably just not think about this, but with timers, then you probably are safer using this callback way of setting. If you're referencing previous state, if you're not referencing previous state, it doesn't matter at all. Okay, so let's see if this worked, right? In our console, look at that. It's working, 789. But what don't we like? Um, Ketzerin? So... We gotta put the border count in there with the yeah. How do I do the, that? The bracket. Curly curly braces. Yep. Yeah, curly bank, uh, curly brace and border count. Awesome. So basically, we just created a counter, right? That's all we've really done. Um. So that's great. So I'm gonna skip the cash and the buying of things because. There's more important things to discuss, uh, and that is how we would do the producers, right? So what was the first one? Workers, and then an extra cow, and then a farm. So I want to pretend we're like, we're going to cheat a bit and pretend this app, like our user has already been running this app and already has those producers and stuff. Um, so... I don't know if there's really a way for me to ask you guys this without just me like showing you how I would structure this, but producers, does anyone have a gut feeling of how you would store producers in this React application? What data structure would make the most sense? An object? Yeah, each producer will be an object. So let's actually start thinking about this. Each producer will be an object. So uh, here's just an example. 
what what's some properties that this producer will likely have? What's some useful properties for us to keep track of each of these producers? Production rate? Yeah, so rate. And the first worker was like one bottle a second, right? Also, what's automatically our first property on every object? Almost every an object. ID. Yeah. So we'll just give it an ID. Rate is awesome, though. What's another property every producer will have? Price. Yes, for sure. Um, I don't remember what a worker was. 25, maybe? What else? These are the great ones. A name. Yes. Uh, worker. The number of uh, the same type of producer that you have. Yeah, but what's a good name for that? Quantity. Yeah, I like quantity. Um, and by, and, uh, well, we, we decided that this is going to be like midway in the game, right? So maybe we have five. So that's a great example of a producer, but uh, we're going to, yeah. On quantity, is that good for encapsulation? I mean, would I include quantity as a property of a single producer? So quantity is, quantity is going to be the number of producers you have of that type of producer. I guess I'm not following what the word encapsulation is doing there. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of a class. Never mind. Okay. Um, yeah, classes we're not hitting till our final two weeks. Uh, so something to look forward to. Um, okay, but we need five of these producers, right? So what data type might we store all these producers in, in our React state? An array. Yeah. So our producers, the, are the information, is some of the information in our producers going to change as the user plays our game? Uh, the quantity, right? Yeah, it looks like, it looks like just the quantity actually, but that's enough for us to want to store this as state. Um, who knows? Maybe eventually in Milkman, you can like add custom producers too. That'd be kind of cool, right? For your user. So let's, let's say that we want to store this as state. What's a good name to store these producers as an array of objects? Um, Aaron, what's the best name for an array of objects of all our producers? Producers? Yeah. And then what is our setter going to be called? Set producers? Yep. Um, and then what's the default value for this, Aaron? Zero. Uh, so eventually, I, I think this is going to be an array of objects. Oh, do you leave it blank or string? Like yeah. So normally, you would string? do an empty array. But I actually, for the purposes of this app, oh, actually for the purposes of the app you're going to build too, you're going to, well, that's not necessarily true. The, the app I built started with an empty array, but you could do this different ways. Um, probably for getting your, your uh, feet wet, is that the expression for getting your feet wet, maybe start with a few that you just manually put in and then you might end up taking them out. Um, let's do three though for fun, right? So what was the second uh, producer for Milkman, uh, David? Do you remember? It was a worker. Wasn't that the first one? Oh, sorry. Uh, it was an extra cow. Yeah, so we're going to put ID2. Does the rate need to change? Yes. Yeah, I think it was two. Let's just say the price was 50. And we say extra cow here. And then for fun, we'll just imagine that they have 10 of them. And then here, ID3, um, the farm maybe did five. And it costs, I don't know, 500. 
and we had three of them. <clears throat> so now kind of the fun part. What's the very react way of, well, let me uh, draw out what I want this to look like. Oh, let me cheat in Milkman too. Let me, I don't know if you guys knew that you could cheat. Uh, where's the golden cow? Is that not enough? Oh, wait, you need a billion. Did anyone get the golden cow? I was kind of disappointed no one got uh, the golden cow. But there's the golden cow. You needed a billion. No one messaged in Discord. Go for it. What? I didn't know. I thought I'd reached the end of how many there were. Well, I, I which... did the update a few hours into class, so you might have been early. But yeah. Uh... So anyway, let me click all these. We want all these producers to be displayed, right? So in our milkman, how can we get this array of objects to show up? Maybe I just right now, let's just say I want the names of each of them. So I want the names, the name of each producer below the bottles. Any ideas? Use filter, I think. Use what? Filter. Can we use filter? Uh, we might use filter eventually, but not right now. Oh. Map? Yeah. So we're going to use map, right? Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll come back to this. The answer is going to be map. But then the question is, well, what is map, right? So let's take a little break from this React code and just, this is just normal JavaScript, okay? So I have an array of our producers, the number of our producers. And for whatever reason, I want to add one to each item in my array. Uh, yeah, and return a new array with the updated values. So who can help me out with this objective? I think uh, usually start with like array dot map, uh, uh, and then uh, it takes in I think function, uh, and uh, it takes the uh, parameter item or an element, uh, uh, and then I think. Uh, we don't need to return, uh, I think, uh, item plus one. Um, so nothing's appearing on the, the console. What can I do? I think uh, you need to put it in a variable. Oh, okay. We could do that, but I'm just going to be lazy. Yeah. So here's how map functions, right? Map. Um, a built-in array method. So you can use it on any array and it will return a new array. Its input is a callback function and that function will be applied on every item of the old array. So here we're saying for this old array, go through for every item add one. So at the end of the day, it's going to return a new array. And if I console.log the old array, what will I see? What will I see? Basically asking is map mutating or non-mutating? Non-mutating. Non-mutating. Yeah. So we're safe to use it in React. 
So that is Matt method. But the thing here is, this is crazy, right? I can return anything I want. Uh, oh, let's get, let's get weird, right? Uh, I'm gonna use my new trick, uh, rabbit. So what will I see in my console now? What will I see in my console now? Um, who, who are we at? Uh, David? Are you there? You're going to see three rabbits? Yeah, very nice. It always, so let's add to the description here. Always returns the same number of items in the new array as the old array. So three rabbits, very nice. But look, it totally ignored item. It doesn't have to use it. It'll return whatever you say to return. So with that in mind, we can get cr even crazier, right? And we can like put JSX here. And put some frogs. And now we have an array. Oh, well... <laughs> Yeah, so this will work in the React component, but outside of it, it gets a little weird. Uh, we can actually throw it up. Uh, wait, hold on. Can I put this in? Yeah, I think if I sneak it in our React component, but I have to then put it before the return. Um, anyway, you get the idea, right? We can we Map will let us return anything we want. So is it replacing the three five ten with a frog, or is it just adding to? Not it? just a frog, a div with a frog. So yeah, that's what I meant. So, but it, but it's replacing it, not just adding to whatever. What just replacing, exists. correct? Yeah. So with that in mind, now let's turn our attention back to our situation here. We have an array, and we want to display the name of each producer and we said we want to use map so what can we how can we do that i'm just winging it but can you put the um whatever you name the the producers that map yeah perfect because producers in an array and what data type does map take, Kim? As it's called, uh, as its argument. Um, the um. What brackets. data type is this? Um. It looks pretty weird, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's a callback function. Callback function. Okay. Yeah. So we'll make ourselves a little arrow function. And here again, what will we see? Well, actually, what will we? See? Actually, what will we see at all on the web page? And how many of them? Uh, Zach, what do you think? Um, I'm not sure what you'd see, but I feel like you'd see three of them. Yeah, and we're returning this empty string. So I think we'll see, Cam, but it might be an error. But if we wanted to make this look better, to make it more HTML friendly, what could? how could we display three Kims? Put them in P tags. Yeah. So for each, there, yeah. But now React is yelling at us that it can't keep track of these p tags because they're identical. So to make React happy, we have to do what? Give them an ID. Yes, but we call it key. Um, and here, what is a unique 
uh, value for each of these objects. ID. IDs. Yeah. What's another one though? Uh, the name. Cost? Yeah. Oh, I mean, quite a few of them could be unique. But here's the problem. If I say producer dot ID, God, VS Code won't even let me do that. What's the problem he now? You can't reference. You're not referencing um, the specific element. You need to pass a parameter <coughs> in the callback function. Yeah. Access the. So we have to name our parameter because it's going to reference each item one at a time. And now we're in a good position. Um, but I didn't want three Kims. I wanted three what? Names, right? Yeah. So how can I do that, Daniel? Is it producer or producers.name? Uh, does producers.name exist? Um, cause I, I'm, I'm just a little confused as to for that, uh, producer that you're entering it, does it have to match the uh, name of the array that we're passing? Or is that something that you're creating in the map, um, method, I guess? Uh, let me expand this. Hopefully it doesn't screw up too much, but let me make this the non short version. If I can do this without screwing this up. There we go. So now, if I console.log producer, what will I see? And this will hopefully answer your question. Our producer is producer the individual items inside the producers? Yeah, one at a time. It iterates through all the items in your array. So the first iteration, what will... What will what will producer be? Worker. It'll be the whole object. This whole first object, mm -hmm. correct? Worker. And then the second iteration, it'll be extra cow, and then the farm. So now, Daniel, coming back to you, what do you think should go in here? Um, producer dot name. Yeah. And there we go. Questions on that. And then because we're just directly returning something, we can shorten this. So this is the very React way to do this. Technically, we could have done other things, right? We could have said like let array and then for let producer of producers and then gone through and like pushed. There's other ways we could have done this. It just wouldn't, it's just not how people do it in React. So you definitely will need to embrace the map method. But remember, map isn't just for React. Map is built into JavaScript fundamentally. For every array, you can transform it into a new array without touching the old array. Questions on this? There's got to be some questions, right? This is tough. Um, I had a question um, about the previous one when <laughs> David or Daniel forgot. Uh, somebody mentioned about like the previous count and when we're talking about that. Yeah. Um, and that how? Because I remember I read something about like how React doesn't actually. Um, reference or like actually use the setter functions um the value until like whenever it you know thinks it's the best time for it like does it in batches right so even if i do like set bottle count um plus one and then i do that like three times inside of an on click it's probably just still going to be plus one or even if i do like set set bottle count mm -hmm. um and then parentheses set bottle count plus five, and then I do a plus one, plus one right after, it's going to be, it's going to do the last value, right? Is that how it kind of works? So you're saying this will break? Always referencing the, 
the current or the previous one. Yeah, if I put like set bottle count, like that that statement like three times. Oh. In a row inside of there, or and if I do like plus five on the first one. I mean, we can try to break it, see what happens. It's just gonna be plus one probably. So. It should be it should be seven, right? When we click was what our intuition would say, but we can see it. Um, wait, did I hold on? No, I, an, that's the, that's the thing that it doesn't really actually. No, no, I think we have an error. Hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, no, no, no. Um, okay, so we would assume that this should be seven. Uh, yeah, except. These the, uh, okay, so this gets into an issue I didn't think we'd hit until uh, next week, or even then, maybe not. These these aren't um, these aren't blocking, so this this might not finish before this one starts or this one starts. So like if we console dot log bottle. Uh, not necessarily bottle will be bottle count plus five right here, which is so confusing in React. So you can't count on, yeah, that, that's an easier way to show this, I think, Ronald. So this won't necessarily be, um, what would we assume it is? Five, right? Hold on. What is, oh, what did we call this? Bottle count, sorry. Oh, it is five here. Huh. I've definitely run into situations where this doesn't do what I expected it to do because of this situation. So it's working for us now, but it's not an assured thing that bottle count will be updated by the time it hits this new line. So it's not perfectly synchronous. Yeah. I remember like there were like some concept about how like, you know, when you use a setter function, you're kind of like just passing that on to React and React will like intelligently yeah. you know, process this better function um, when it, in the most optimal time, which is pro so basically even if you have multiple setters in the one callback, um, you know, like on- Oh, here, we broke it. It's going to do it at the very end, the like yeah. last one. And because obviously you don't want it to update and like, you know, like have that stutter effect multiple times in a one on click, it's just going to do it one time. Yeah. And it's probably going to- at the very end in, in one batch yeah and that if, but if you really want the current state of whatever you're trying to get you would just like kind of like put it in a local variable and that way you're you're referencing the local variable state of that i mean that's just kind of like and that's kind of like the concept of how, why you have like that callback function for that setter function if you want the most latest up yeah. value of the bottle count that you would do like previous bottle count because might, that is always going to reference the yeah bottle it might count. be a good idea whenever you're using setter it might be just even though it works the majority of the time the other way it might be a good idea to just always go ahead and get in the habit of using the callback function style so let's let's see if we can fix this but if we can't we got to move on because we have other stuff um so this is broken right this should be 15 but if I'm wondering if we change all of these to be previous bottle count, previous bottle count, I wonder if this will fix it. And I actually have no idea. Um, so now, yeah, so now it fixes it. So... When referencing, when setting state with old state might be a good idea to use this callback style, even though it's more complicated because it, it prevents, it turns this into the synchronous code we expect it to be. Hopefully always, but who knows, might be exceptions. All right, that's, uh, any questions on that? But with that being said, this is more advanced than I really intended to get today. Okay, so let's make the let's turn this back to that. Max, could I ask a question about the bit that you did before? Yeah, put put the code um, back. 
No, no, sorry. Oh. Uh, line, lines, uh, what, like, I think it's 33 now. Or if you delete it, like 30. Line 30? Lines 30 and 31. Um, is it possible for you to give like a more, um, like a pseudo code way of saying what, um, instead of saying like producers and key, like what information you can put in there if you wanted to, if that makes sense, like what the structure is. I think it, at the end of the day, it might help to see what does this actually produce, this okay. math function. Let, so let's start there. And then if that helps you. We'll... So does anyone have a guess? What does this look like when this resolves entirely? What data type is it, first of all? When I get the products of the name. What is the I mean, overall data type the of lines 30 through 32 that's produced when this code is interpreted? Uh, I think it's an array. It's an array. Um, what's the first item look like in this array when everything's said and done? Is it a string? No. What are we returning for each iteration? It's a bad idea. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's a paragraph element, gotcha. yep. So it looks like this, but it has a key on the first iteration that's equal to what value? The name? No, what is the key equal ID? to? Oh, sorry, the ID. And what is the ID equal to of the first iteration? One? Yeah, so it has the number one. Um, and then what's inside the P tag? The name? Which is, is, is the worker. Yep. So this is what actually it, it evaluates to. And then what is the second? Well, I'll make a copy, right? Because it's going to be very similar. But you tell me what has to change on this second item in the array that gets produced from these lines. What is the key now, Zach? I'm sorry, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, open to the class. Two. 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 Yeah. And what's the value here? Uh, the name. What's the yeah. And then who has the third one that gets produced? Farm. Yep. And the key? Three. So this is what literally gets made for these lines of code. Any follow-up questions on that? What if we just uncommented this? Who thinks this will work? Uh, well, <laughs> it's not looking promising right now. Uh, why doesn't that work? Do the names need to be in quotations? I didn't like think Like in, in a string? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, probably. There we go. It looks a little better. Uh, two. There we go. Okay, who thinks this will work? <laughs> who think what will we see in the screen actually? Any guesses? I'm telling you that these two things are equivalent theoretically. Do the same thing. I think we'll see two of worker extra cow farm worker extra cow farm. So these two things are equivalent. Does that, I don't know. Are there, I don't know if that helps or not. Um, are there follow-up questions though? I hate when teachers ask, does that help? Because no one ever says no. Uh, are there follow-up questions on that?
Okay. Um, should I leave this or delete this? Maybe I'll put it at the bottom if anyone wants to remember it. Whoops. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, so, so we have 10 more minutes. What do I want to do? We displayed these things. Um, every second, so our final objective, right? Every second, I want the bottle count to be updated. Every second, I want the bottle count to be updated. Because right now, in this game, um, we have five workers, 10 extra cows, three farms. How can we update our bottle count? Because every second, our user is actually um, earning bottles. That's our overall objective. But right now, how can I fire a function to run every second? Is it use effect sent set interval? Yep. So use effect does what for us? It Ryan? allows you to um, do something once. Yes. It allows us to define a function that will run once if we give an empty array dependency and what function do we want to run once set interval yeah so set interval will run it takes two arguments the first is our callback function and it will run every so often and we'll say a thousand milliseconds and we'll console.log running to see if it's actually running. It is running every second, but there's one more thing we need to do in React. Because React creates an application, tears it down, we want to return what? The interval ID. Yeah. So we have to clear out this interval or things get crazy. Um, why is this running twice now? There we go. Okay. So running every second, just like we want, right? Things are looking good. Now, how can we calculate the extra bottles we've earned this second? And this is uh, the probably the most fun part of lecture. This is the real like thinking part. Mathy part. No ideas? Should we use map again? We could use map, but map might be overkill, I think. Okay. We just need a number of the extra bottles. So I'll even get us started. Let extra bottles equal zero. How can I calculate how many extra bottles we've earned in a second? This is like an SAT question, kind of. Do you do the quantity yeah, the rate times what? The quantity for each item added. So how can I go through my producer's array and calculate this for each item? Would you, would you use a filter? Uh, no, for, I'm going to use a for oh. loop, for of loop. So I'm going to go through my producer's array. 
one at a time. So that's working. But what do I want to do? How do I calculate the extra bottles for each producer one at a time? Okay, you do a producer dot rate times producer uh, dot quantity and then have that equal extra bottles or something? Yeah, this will equal extra bottles, but we want the old extra bottles. This might be the third iteration. So there's one more step we need, or one more tweak. Can we do extra bottles plus producer dot? Uh, yep. Yeah, plus producer times quantity. So now this is our. So now this is our extra bottles, and let's console.log that to see if it makes sense. So we're getting 40. I'm going to assume that makes sense. Now, what do we want to do with those extra bottles? What was the whole point of calculating the extra bottles? Uh, set bottles? Yeah, we want to set the bottles. And because we're using old state to set new state, we'll go ahead and use the, the function form of this and say previous bottles. And then what do we want to return here? Extra bottles. Yeah, extra bottles. Plus premium, sorry. sorry. Very nice. Um, except this Good is question. wrong, right? I didn't call that, I said set bottle count. Okay, so look at that. It's, it's adding the extra bottles every second. And we're right at time. Questions on this? Questions on anything, because that's everything I wanted to cover. Does it explain one more time what you were doing? Your mic is super low right now. Yeah. Sorry, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Can you explain it one more time, like about the whole calculation there that you just did? Yeah, maybe in English it's it's easier. So we have, right now, this is what our user has. Um, can I expand this? They have five workers, and each second a worker makes one bottle. So in one second, how many bottles does, does the total workers produce? Five. Yeah. And we have 10 cows that make two bottles a second. How many do they give us? Five. 20. All right, sorry, 20. And we have three farms that produce five each. 15. Yep, yeah. So we add these together and that's the total extra bottles per second. So we do that in English, we just talk about that, but then the question is, well, how do we calculate that in code? And the answer to that is lines 27 through 29. I saw you unmute, Zach, what do you got? <laughs> I was, yeah, I was going to say, is the advantage of this with React that, see, to me, this seems more difficult than when we were doing it with the vanilla stuff, but I assume that the advantage here is you don't have to manipulate the DOM. Yeah, well, that's the whole reason we're learning React, okay. besides the uh, more practical reason of it's the most popular framework and that's where the jobs are. The The coding reason is because it's going to be way more efficient at the end of the day because we don't have to manually manipulate the DOM. Um, yeah. So once you're more proficient with this stuff, then you're more- Then it'll be, it. it'll see, okay. feel very hard to manually manipulate the DOM. Okay. Trust me, I, I, I know both now and this yeah. feels so much nicer to me. Okay. Mm, sorry. But it doesn't come without a cost. It's really hard. 
Uh, sir, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I was just curious, like, uh, the youth effect function, I think, uh, or what do you say, like, that youth effect, uh, is it, like, only for using on stops like this, like, uh, set interval, or it, it has other, other functions also? Oh, it has a, uh, a really important um, uh, function that we're going to explore next week for oh. making requests to a server. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, we're going to use effect is not going anywhere. It, it's going to feel way simpler. I, 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 you know, the strange thing next week is going to feel so much simpler. I, I bet. Um, because using timers in react is just difficult We're we're going against the nature of react. So it's going to feel easier next week. Uh, so if we had to use uh, like the other function uh, uh, called uh, set timeout, uh, so, so that was also uh, we should also use use effect for that. Yeah, all the same rules are still going to apply for those two timers. Um, for the calculation we just did, this is calculating all of the producers at once, correct? Yeah, we could have a hundred, and it would be fine. Oh, no, no. My question would have been, like, if you want to isolate a producer. Oh, yeah. This wouldn't um, be that. So would you replace uh, producer dot rate, for example, with the specific producer, like one of the IDs? Or I don't know. Uh, Name. So I don't know. If we had a function like producer extra bottles just by itself, maybe. Uh, it would depend which producer you wanted, but you could just do, well, producers is an array, right? How do I access the first item of an array, Hara? I want to say dot. Uh, no, uh, oh, no, actually, no. Uh, bracket. bracket. Yeah. So bracket. zero. Yeah. zero, and then we could do, so producers bracket zero is an object. So now we can do dot rate. And then times producers zero dot quantity. So this is how I don't I don't know why you'd want to do that, but I'm, I mean, if there's a reason, you could, for sure. All right. If there's any, I'm gonna get the rooms going, but if there's any other questions, just shout them out. I have one more question just on line 32. Can you explain that 